Hello, uh, this is Jeff Warren, and this is an introduction to Spectral Workbench 2. Uh, we're assuming uh, today that you have um, uh, logged in and created an account at Public Lab, and you're on your dashboard, uh, as I am, and also that you've built uh, and plugged in a spectrometer based on one of the Public Lab um, DIY spectrometer designs or one of the Public Lab kits, um, and that that's plugged in uh, by USB cable to your computer. So Spectral Workbench is a place to, to uh, collect your data uh, and analyze it, but also to share your data and to you know, uh, uh, be part of this online community. Uh, you can see some of the recent research here, which is great, and you have links to share your own, as well as to post questions or join uh, different discussions, and I encourage you to do so. There's also uh, a listing of recent Spectra down here. You can look at your own, but uh, these are just ones that folks have uploaded in the past few minutes. Some of them are mine, some of them are others. Uh, but what you'll be doing most of the time, uh, you know, is clicking up here, Capture Spectra. And um, on most modern browsers that can access um, your webcam, uh, it'll connect to your uh, spectrometer, which actually has a webcam inside it. Um, and uh, the first time, it will pop up a, a menu asking you for permission, and you'll say Allow. And, uh, you know, if it gets the wrong webcam, you can click here. This is in Chrome, but Firefox has a similar sort of interface. And you can choose uh, the webcam you want. Uh, and then you'll have to refresh uh, the page to get that. Uh, it'll ask your permission only once. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this icon for the camera will always be here. Uh, okay, so you can see uh, there's actually a spectrum already here. I've pointed my spectrometer uh, towards a window. Uh, you can point it at a lamp uh, or something else, but you want to get sort of a, an easy, broad spectrum here. Uh, it helps to point it at something big and lit up, not something, not like a tiny light, because that's hard to line up. So point it out the window at a cloudy sky, point it at a white wall that's well illuminated. And you'll see the spectrum. You want this line to intersect the spectrum. So if you click here, I won't do it, but if you click here, you can move that line up and down. And that line is the cross-section line. The cross-section for the video uh, determines where it's going to pull the numbers out, the brightness values out of that image. So um, you'll want to choose a good one that's right down the middle. Mine is a little below, but there's still light there. And I'll tell you in a moment why it's a little bit lower than this. Um, you can see I'll cover my spectrometer up, and you won't see the light anymore. And, and I can move it around, for example. Um, and, uh, and once you set this, you don't really want to change it. Um, and if you change it, you may have to recalibrate. Notice that some spectra are slightly curved. This has to do with the lens in the, in the webcam and the, the DVD fragment we're using and, and different things like this. Uh, so if, you, if that line moves up, the, the position of all the peaks of, the, of all these bands may change uh, to the left or right. So once you choose one, you want to stick with it. Um, and also note that the blue is, sort of on the, uh, is on the left side and the red is on the right side. Um, which is the standard for spectral workbench. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about overexposure um, in a moment, but before I press begin, I want you to notice I'm using a, um, a calibration reference. That means that I've already actually calibrated this spectrometer. Uh, you may not have done that, um, and it may, it may not have one here, but um, uh, I'll show you that that doesn't matter at the moment. Um, you can save even without a calibration, and later associate your calibration with each um, each spectrum you capture. Uh, but uh, because I've done it, when I click OK, uh, you'll see that actually my wavelengths are all labeled. Uh, and once you have a calibration, uh, you'll be able to do that too. Um, this line here, I'm going to cover it up for a moment, and you'll see it's actually a waterfall graph uh, or a waterfall display of the past 20 seconds or so of data, whereas the graphs here show current data. Um, and you can always get back to your uh, settings page with the button up here just by clicking this little preview window. Now, okay, I mentioned overexposure. This is pretty important. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit, or the webcam, the, the spectrometer a little bit, and you notice it's warning me that there's uh, clipping, that the light source is too strong. Now, this is pretty bad. Uh, what happens is if it's too bright, like you can see in the preview here, um, some of the channels... Uh, register greater than 100%, or they, they top out at 100%. And, and if you do that too much, it's actually smushing the shape of the curve. Um, 
And you don't want that. That'll actually uh, destroy information that you'll need in your analysis. So what you can do is if you're using a lamp uh, or something that can be dimmed, just dim it until these peaks are, are a, little, a bit lower. You want like lower than 90% or lower than 80%. Um, uh, likewise, you don't want them to be too low because there's a lot of noise in the signal and then you want them to rise above the noise. Uh, so what I, what I have here is actually pretty good. I mean, it, it's like right smack in the middle. And this white line is the average of the colors. That's the line you'll actually be using for analysis. Uh, but you always want to make sure that your three uh, color channels aren't, aren't clipped or overexposed. So we're doing pretty well here. Uh, I'm ready to save. And um, you'll see what I mean about calibration here. Uh, so it's asking us to fill out you know, a title. We'll say sunlight, which is actually what I'm um, scanning right now. Uh, we can add some tags. Uh, I could describe it. And then uh, it, it's prompting me to use the calibration I have associated here. But I can actually just press save and calibrate later. And so it doesn't really matter. Uh, all right, so we're going into the spectrum page for the spectrum we just captured. It opens in a new tab. That's so you don't have to keep resetting your, you know, your webcam and so forth. But uh, we're not going to be capturing again, so I'm going to I'm going to close that. So okay, we have this window open, and it's uh, processing the data. Uh, it's going to load in a moment here, and um, what we'll do is. Uh, I'm going to use that calibration that I have already saved, and it's actually available on, on this other tab I have open. I'm going to use this to calibrate the first one, um, and I'll show you how we do that. Calibration itself is going to be covered in a different video, um, but, uh, but we'll just show you what you'll be doing most of the time, which is using an existing calibration. Looks good. And notice it says uncalibrated pixels, which is right. I'm going to copy calibration, and uh, this shows recent calibrations um, it's not actually showing that most recent one, which I made about an hour ago. Here it is. I searched for it, and I'm going to apply. And what it's doing is to, it knows that the device is the same device, or I know that because I did it myself an hour ago, and it's copying over the pixel positions from the calibration into, into this um, spectrum, and you can see now that we have a fully labeled and uh, wavelength calibrated um, set of results. So that's, I'm going to stop there for this tutorial. We'll, uh, in other video tutorials, we'll cover topics like um, actually doing a calibration. Uh, we'll do some comparisons, and we'll learn how to use some of these tools uh, down here. But uh, thank you very much, and I hope you uh, enjoy uh, Spectral Workbench.